All right, so yeah, that's the thing that I want to do in 30 minutes. That's not a lot, so let's uh, start quickly. So um, if you go away here, then I want you to understand what's the value in Viral, why you would use it, um, and also describe you know, what Viral consists of, what the architecture is, and then uh, maybe if you um, bear with me, then also you can have a quick understanding of what the Viral APIs can do so that you can actually use uh, Python or any other uh, methodology of using REST-based APIs to drive viral and to you know, start simulations, for example, to really integrate the technology into your tool chain. So here's the overview. Now, if you are a developer, there is a challenge, um, if, and if you have the challenge to you know, like integrate, develop, and create applications um, and solutions in the network environment, you need to test these applications. And what you usually would do is you have like a range of devices, real devices, physical devices, that you would test these applications against. And um, chances are that you don't have like network devices and test devices in abundance. So these come at the cost. They have to be racked and stacked. They need to be set up. They need to be configured and cabled and everything. So this is something um, that is important um, and takes time, takes money. So if we have a solution for this that takes all of this away, that would be great, wouldn't it? So we need something that is easy to build, that is easy to configure, and that is also easy to scale, so that you don't have like a minimal test environment where you just have maybe a switch or a router or maybe three of these devices, but maybe tens, dozens, even hundreds, <coughs> excuse me, of these devices that can make up a test uh, network that you can build your application and test your application against. Okay, so who's a developer in our point of view? So there is independent software vendors, there's customers, there's integrators, there's a, a, a ton of you know, individuals out there that want to build applications. Um, and effectively, it's you, right? So everybody should be in the position to be uh, developing and de deploying and testing such an application or such applications and testing them against a, a simulated network. So it applies pretty much to everybody. Now, if you look at economics, I talked about this before already. Um, so these networks that you want to test against, I mean, they come at a price. If you want to test your application against a provider, uh, provider scale network, right? And if you have to have XRV routers, for example, I mean, they come at a price. So they have a huge price tag. And if you have to have a multiple of these devices to test something that is even more complex, um, then the price easily scales up uh, to a lot of money, right? And then there is also the cost that is um, associated with racking and stacking and building all of this and configuring all of this. So there is a lot of cost involved to bring up a test network and everybody is contending for these resources. So if you're not alone and owning this equipment exclusively, um, then of course you have to contend with other people for these lab resources. You have to plan ahead and you have to schedule and um, you know, like look if you can get a time slot within this network or within this equipment. Um, so this is time and money that is being spent um, for these kind of things. And Viral can really help you uh, to provide you this kind of environment at a very, very low cost um, because it's everything, something could be run even on your laptop, right? And if you want to scale further, you would run this on a large scale server. And um, so that's very, very easy to scale out and to build at a very small cost. Now, Viral is uh, a tool that consists of multiple components. So primarily it's a client server application. So you run your client on your laptop or on your workstation and you run the back end um, on a server, right? It could be the same workstation. So you could even run the whole system on a laptop given that you have sufficient memory and CPU resources on the laptop. Um, it's a painless configuration in the sense that we provide a configuration engine and that configuration engine is aware of your topology, aware of certain parameters within your topology and can provide a basic configuration by the push of a button. So everything will be configured, including BGP routing, OSPF processes, IP subnetting, and all of that will be configured by Viral. Um, and by the push of a button, again, it will spin up um, that topology consisting of network devices which are running uh, synced code. So the code that these devices are running is actually synced from the real code that is run on the real devices. So these are not like simulated or emulated devices, they're actually running the real code. So that gives rapid setup and teardown times, so it's really literally the, uh, a matter of minutes. 
And in addition, you can also connect the whole thing to the outside world. So it's not confined to the, <clears throat> to the virtual machine or to the machine that you're running this on. It's also uh, capable of connecting to real network devices so you can run your real switch, your real router and connect it to the virtual simulated router in the inside of your viral host. So that's also possible. All right, so where can we run this on? So uh, we can run this on um, a VMware environment. We can run this on bare metal. So there is um, really literally not a lot of requirements in terms of equipment that you do have. I can run this here on my laptop, given that I do have sufficient memory. So I have 16 gigabytes of memory on here, and that is sufficient to run a viral environment. Setup times for networks is in minutes. Configuration um, is done automatically by, the com by a component included in viral. And there is no contention for resources, because everybody can run this on his personal machine if you want to. Right? All right, and you can take it with you. So I can take this here on, on the stage, and I can take it on a plane. I can take it wherever I want. Now, talking about the system architecture, what does it look like? What does it consist of? So we do have <clears throat> operating systems, and as I said, they are built synced to uh, the code that is actually running on the real devices. Now, um, the thing here that we have to remember is that there is a difference between things that run on the control plane of these devices and things that run in ASICs, right? So the more we are getting into the direction of the control plane, uh, the more uh, faithful the simulation will be. So, so everything um, that is in direction of the control plane is pretty much uh, very faithful, including, <coughs> including all the hidden features that you get, uh, aka bugs. Um, and if you go into the south of the system architecture of such a device, uh, where there are you know, hardware-dependent things like ASICs and port uh, physical things, right? Um, the features will not be identical. So you won't get every feature on the, uh, on the physical level, but you will get all the features on the control plane level, which are identical to the real systems. So we are, we are running the same code, um, but we will see differences in, 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 let's say, ASIC behavior or real behavior if you are looking at things like quality of service um, or other things that are dependent on ASIC features. So they are not there, right? All right. So what we do is we build the whole system on top of a physical host or a virtual machine for that matter, um, but we are running this on I86 hardware. Right, whether real hardware or virtual hardware. On top of this, we are building, uh, we are having an Ubuntu uh, host operating system. So that's the one that we built everything else on top. And then we have a hypervisor layer again on top. And that's the reason why this slide is titled with nested. So if we are running this in a virtual environment, we are actually running virtual machines inside virtual machines, which is a nested um, yeah, environment. So KVM is the inner hypervisor, if you will, and on top of the inner hypervisor, we are running the Cisco operating systems and other operating systems as well, as long as they play nice with KVM, right? So we can run uh, Linux servers on top of this or other virtual machines that are running nicely on KVM. So we can also, it's not included, but theoretically, you can also include Windows operating systems on top of that and make Windows operating systems part of your topology that you run in the simulated environment. Now, the whole system is built on OpenStack, currently running on IceHouse. Um, and we are using part of the components that OpenStack is made of. Um, most importantly, of course, Nova for the compute services, Glance for the storage services, and Neutron for the network services. We also make Horizon as the dashboard for OpenStack available, primarily for read-only access, uh, but it's there. Um, so the operating systems, they go into glance, into image storage, and then we spin up uh, the virtual machines using Nova, uh, which is sort of modified so that we can imply, um, implement our own requirements that we have for bringing up a virtual network right in that, in that specific environment. Now, as I said before, Viral consists of two components primarily. It's a client and it's a server backend. Right. The server backend, as I said, runs on uh, Ubuntu, um, and the client is essentially a, uh, a GUI application where you create and design your network. So, and this is called Via Maestro. Via Maestro is a point-and-click interface where you design your network, you put the nodes, you configure your nodes, you give them configurations, you give them parameters, and um, 
and then it's also including a component that is called the configuration component and that provides configurations into these topologies that you create with VM Maestro. Um, now topology representation is something where you where VM Maestro creates. That that is the outcome of VM Maestro. So it creates an XML based file which has all the description of the nodes and the links between the nodes, the properties of the nodes, including the configurations of the nodes. So you will see in that XML file the actual iOS configuration, for example. Um, that makes up the whole topology so that it is repeatable by providing the same configuration and starting that up in a viral environment. You will get the same output, you will get the same running routers with the same configuration and so on and so forth. I talked about AutoNetKit already a bit. AutoNetKit is the intelligent component of viral that um, provides you with um, some sort of artificial intelligence, if you will. So it has kind of a toolkit and understands what kind of node you have, what kind of connections you have, between the nodes, what kind of properties the nodes have. For example, do I want to run on my topology OSPF as my um, internal gateway protocol? Do I want to run BGP? Do I have route reflectors? Do I have route reflector clients? Um, all of this is understood by, by ANK. And ANK is then able to provide uh, a network plan, an IP addressing plan for IPv4 and IPv6. It creates subnets, it creates all the routing processes, it creates all the autonomic system numbers if you want to. So all of this information can be used by ANK to create configurations on the devices which are able to run. If you, if you click then the start button, then automatically your network comes up with all the components ready and configured. So you will see BGP coming up, you will see OSPF coming up if you have configured, if you have configured a system that way. Um, so it's, it's all of this information and all of this configuration expertise, if you will, is provided uh, by the component that is called ANK. There is also a component that is called, um, or that, that is included in ANK, which is called um, the visualiz visualization component, sorry. Uh, so the visualization component is able to provide a, a layered view of your network um, as it has been configured by ANK. So you will see, for example, autonomous systems as colored um, you know, areas within your network topology. You will see, okay, where is your area zero in OSPF? You will see the connections between BGP peers. So for example, if you do have uh, a full mesh BGP network, you will see all the lines connecting these different nodes as they talk to each other, right? And going, f going forward and, and, and in the future, we will also be able to provide um, um, real-time information into this view. So for example, we will have a live update of this view. Um, if OSPF neighborships, for example, drop, um, then um, the view will be automatically reflecting this. So this will be a real-time update. We've shown this yesterday as a peak preview. So this is something that is coming forward real soon. Now, how does this then come together? So there is a component in Vival that is um, services topology director, and services topology director is kind of the middleware that talks to the viral uh, front end, which is VM Maestro, and uh, facilitates with the viral back end. It runs actually on the viral back end, but it facilitates with OpenStack, and, and takes that topology file that you created, including all the configurations, and spins up the virtual machines with the right operating systems, and so on and so forth, and controls the flow. For example, if you want to start a simulation, stop simulation, uh, start or stop individual nodes, extract configurations from a running simulation, all of this is being done by STD. This is the workflow, so you start with VM Maestro, you uh, go through ANK to provide the configurations. The configurations will be um, returned back to VM Maestro. Uh, you can look at the topology views if you want to. Um, STD will then take this configuration, and put it into OpenStack, spin up the virtual machine, and you have a running topology uh, where you can console in, where you can telnet in, where you can do you know, all the stuff that you need to do in a virtual network, or in a real network for that matter. There is a, a viral family. So viral is kind of a technology by itself and it comes in different flavors. So in the current flavors that we do have is the Cisco Modeling Labs, which is a product that is being sold um, by the learning organization in Cisco. Then there is a personal edition and the personal edition is, um, yeah, smaller scaled if you will, right? I have, um, it's coming up to 15 nodes or it's you're able to use up to 50 nodes within the personal edition. Um, the, the Cisco modeling labs can provide a lot more nodes, so depending on how much licenses you buy. Um, and the other important difference between the two is 
uh, Cisco Modeling Labs comes with tax support, and uh, the personal addition is community support. So you cannot shout at engineers in tech um, if you have a problem with the personal addition. Um, you can shout at engineers if you buy CML, right? Uh, but it comes at a different price point. And Rival is also included in the Dev Innovate rack um, as it is being shown over there. So that's also part of the, of the Dev Innovate solution there. So we will get Rival there as well. All right. So I'm actually through with this. And um, if there are questions, so please ask and ask questions. I have a demo that I would like to show you. Um, any questions? Yeah, there's one. Any, any possible uh, possibility to get layer two features into Vial, like catalyst switches or something like this? Yeah, we heard that question loud and clear. So the question is, is there any, yeah, you, you heard, every, everybody heard, right? Um, we demoed yesterday a prototype of layer two features. So we demoed a um, iOS VL2, which is a kind of catalyst kind of switch, right? So again, what I said before, um, it's not exactly a catalyst switch because that would include a lot more. So for example, you would not get a 6500 with all its features, right, and all its possibilities and, and uh, feeds and speeds and all of this, right? We do have a switch prototype ready, or it's, it's in, in prototyping state, um, and that can do things like uh, port channels and trunks and switch ports and um, so all of these kind of things, it can do IP device tracking, it can do somewhat 802.1x, uh, but it depends, right? So we are not really exactly sure what is 100% supported, so that's a matter of testing and support. The code is there, uh, but it needs to be tested more, right? Okay. Does it help? Okay, so um, quick demo. Okay. So this is my, my VM Maestro, um, and I'm, I'm quickly going uh, and showing you how I actually create a topology. So I just drag and drop or click and drop the routers onto my canvas, and I can um, then connect them with the connection tool. And um, the next thing that I would do then is to actually provide a configuration to this, to this topology, right? And this is by simply pushing this button up here. And what it does, what it should do, uh, it's all green. So why does it not provide it? Something failed. But the configuration should be there. See, so, so the configuration is there. So what you see is that the configuration has been provided into this machine, right? And the visualization piece, for whatever reason, did, did, did not show. But I have now a configured topology with all the routers configured, and I can actually run this now by pushing the green button. And what it does now, it talks to my back end, right? And in the back end, it will spin up this additional topology, as you can see on the right-hand side. Um, there is now additional machines showing up. And they are in the phase of undeployed, right? So they will be deployed, they will be built, and ultimately they will be active and running, right? And I can tell that into them. I have already a couple of machines running over here. So you see the same set down here that are already re active. And um, what I can do here is that I can actually uh, show, with using some of the scripts, I can show, um, like, what machines are running, um, um, what kind of interface they are connected to, so I can talk on the back end to these guys, right? And um, what I can also do, I can use um, some of the API examples that I have in here uh, to actually um, you know, extract this information or um, do a kind of hello world thing that talks to my back end and extracts information using a Python script from the back end, right? And um, so as we can see here, these are all now active and running, and I can uh, turn it into these guys to their console. And they might be still be booting. And let's use one of these other guys. Yeah, they are still booting, right? Now, APIs are things that can be used on, on different levels, right? So we can use them on the open stack API level, but we can also use them on the viral API level. So there is a specific API for viral um, where you can you know, extract configuration and all of this stuff. I've showed you this demo um, real quick here in the interest of time. Um, 
And there is also the demo resources that I use here, so the Hello World demo and some other utilities are available on GitHub, so you can download these demos on GitHub and also API examples in here. The presentation itself has a lot of hidden slides explaining the, um, the, the API of Viral itself, so what, what kind of features and possibilities are in there. And um, you know, if, if there is one thing that I would like to take you home, uh, for you to take home, then there is, it is that Viral is really the missing link in um, you know, test-driven development. So it's, it's the thing that you need um, to actually be able to test your network applications against a real live network without the need for having uh, to spend like the, uh, the lot of, a lot of money to provide all these uh, physical network devices. All right, so uh, one thing to mention here is that we have a promo running this week, so there is a 30% discount on the personal edition. It's just this week. If you're interested in the promo, find us over there, so we hand out you a discount code, and, and you can get viral at a 30% discount. There is labs that we can do in, on viral, so you can get your hands on viral and do something. And if you have additional questions, I'm around here over there at the viral booth, so feel free to get in touch. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your. There's a question. So the, can we use APIC with Viral? Yes, we can. So if you have a, a machine that is powerful enough, you can actually include APIC as a VM into Viral and run you know, APIC to control um, your virtual nodes. So there are certain things that APIC cannot control. So for example, as I said before, you cannot control um, quality of service features, but you can de definitely control security features, given that you have the switch that we are not having released yet. Okay. Other questions? Thank you.